so what actually uh, in the inverters we are studying how many types of inverters we are having one is bridge inverter that is full bridge inverter another one is nothing but sine wave inverter which is called the series inverter so uh, right now first let us see the animation of the full bridge inverter so we already know dc to ac but pure ac we will never obtain immediately first we obtain the square wave signal the output ac signal can also be in the shape of square wave or triangular waveform mm -hmm. okay so pure ac value average value is equal to zero so right now this circuit i want to show you so inverter means in your brain you must have the h shaped circuit so you can see here four switches s1 s2 s3 s4 that is scrs we can use as the switches here s1 and s4 s3 and s2 so this is the dc supply as already we have studied load has to be placed here whether it is bulb or the motor so let us check the animation one second what we have studied full bridge in butter if you are perfect in this one we can easily modify this circuit we are having the ac motor single phase induction motor is this one i want to control the speed of that particular motor i want to rotate that motor now one question uh, every student might get sir here you are placing ac motor and here you are connecting dc supply but in our house we will get ac supply why we are supposed to use the inverter ac supply will give to the induction motor i will rotate the induction motor directly but the question is induction motor speed should be controlled with variable frequency so remember my word variable frequency is the word is used in the industries so variable frequency concept we are using to control the speed of the motor so how we will get variable frequency our input is power supply is how much 50 hertz but we require 20 hertz 30 hertz 10 hertz greater than 50 hertz 100 hertz how it is possible it is possible with the help of the bridge inverter so inverters convert fixed dc power to variable dc power at different frequencies now i you i hope you people have understood why we are supposed to use the inverter so here the load is nothing but the ac motor ac motor speed has to be controlled at different speeds so ac current means it is not only sine wave it can be the square wave form triangular wave form now let us see in what way the current flows okay 60 hertz or 50 hertz input the output sorry now so this animation what they are trying to show you here so when we can confirm that ac current is flowing through the load anyone tell me when we can say ac current is flowing if the current flowing through the load is in one direction and the current flowing through the load is in opposite direction after certain period of time then the current flowing then the current flowing through the load is ac current this word you have to write so ac current is flowing through the load we can confirm only when if the current flowing through the load is in one direction and then the current flowing through the load is in opposite direction after certain period of time so here in the animation so first current is flowing in one direction and then in opposite you can check here clear so current should flow in two different directions then we can confirm that the current flowing through the load is ac current now let us see the mosfet we can use in the inverters these are the mosfet here four switches it is easy to commutate so how this circuit will run so first when the power supply is on when the battery is on direction of the current always start from positive terminal to negative terminal you can see in our houses we use as a right so we'll discuss today after that animation four switches we have already studied so two switches will be turning on and two switches will be off this one i want to show you so right four switches circuit also you have seen so what is the case one current start from the positive terminal and it flows through the s1 and then to the s uh, more load s4 and from s4 to the negative terminal so at a time this is the positive terminal so current flows from s4 to load load to s1 or in reverse we can explain. so 
So when two SCRs or MOSFETs are on, other two will be off. So current is flowing in opposite direction. Okay. So in this way, we confirm that current flowing in one direction and then in opposite direction. So basic inverter circuit is this one. So this inverter, it generates the only the square wave signal. We are supposed to convert it to the modified sine wave. We will see today our topic is pulse width modulation. We will discuss that one. So now let us go to the next inverter. This is the notes we have taken. Four MOSFETs and how the current flows. I hope every student is perfect in this one. With the waveforms also we have taken. And then we have seen the single phase bridge inverter with inductive load. Okay, animation, everything we have seen. So today's topic we are going to start with the new slide. You are able to see what is the name of this circuit, anyone? Series inverter, right? The series inverter. So all the students, please uh, check this one. Very simple explanation. Follow my explanation here. Right. So the uh, series inverter, why the name series inverter? Because the commutating components, inductor and capacitor are connected in series with the load. You can see here capacitor, inductor are connected in series with the load. So why do we place the capacitor and inductor? They are called commutating components. And in order to generate this sine wave, series inverter generates the sine wave. A bridge inverter generates which wave? Anyone tell me? Modified sine wave. Modified sine wave. So series inverter generates the sine wave only because of the capacitor and inductor when they operate at resonant frequency. So first let us explain the circuit technically. So case one, when the supply is on, what is what's going to happen? When the supply is on, the firing pulse is given to the main SCR T1. Therefore, direction of the current start from VDC plus to T1. T1 is on and from T1 to capacitor, capacitor starts to charge and then from capacitor to inductor, inductor to the load, load will be on and from load to the V minus, as simple as that. Okay, now, when the supply is on and SCR is on, direction of the current we have discussed. After certain period of time, you, that you can see the case one here, okay. Supply is on and T2 is off, so current flows to SCR1, capacitor, inductor, resistor and back to the VDC minus. So during this process, capacitor charges, okay, capacitor charges, inductor also will start to energize. But when we are having capacitor and inductor combination, so all the explanations are given only for the capacitor, that is the assumption. That means theoretically we are not giving the explanation, we are not highlighting the explanation, behavior of the inductor. So when supply is on, capacitor charges, okay, so after certain period of time, the capacitor starts to discharge. You can see if this is the positive terminal, capacitor will discharge from the same terminal. So what's going to happen? How this T1 will be off? So case one, I hope it is one line only. So when the supply is on and T1 is on, direction of the current start from VDC plus to T1, T1 to the capacitor, capacitor to inductor, inductor to the load. During this condition, if the load is the resistor load, load will be on. If the load is the motor, Motor accelerates, gains kinetic energy and rotates in forward direction and the current flows from load to the source. Case 2, after certain period of time, the capacitor starts to discharge. Here you can see the case 2 circuit, capacitor starts to discharge. The discharging current enters which terminal of uh, T2? Anode terminal. Therefore, now the T2 is given the firing pulse and hence the T2 is on. So you can ask one question, how the T1 is off? So during the case one, when the current becomes zero, when the current flowing through the load completely becomes zero, what's going to happen? The T1 SCR is going to turn off completely. So in case two, the capacitor starts to discharge. Discharging current starts to flow from C plus to a T2 and from T2 to the load. Now you can see current flowing through the load is in which direction? Same direction or opposite direction? Anyone tell me? can unmute and tell me in the case one current is flowing in one direction let us say from top to bottom from a to b but here in the case two current is flowing in same direction or opposite direction current is flowing in opposite direction you can see when capacitor discharges discharging current enters the positive terminal of the uh, t2 and then the uh, t2 is turned on and so followed by the current flows to the load 
and this current is entering in opposite direction therefore we can say in the case 1 and case 2 the current flowing through the load is in two directions ac current is flowing and this discharging current has to come back to the c minus so discharging path of the capacitor is from c plus to t2 t2 to the load and from load to the uh, inductor inductor to c minus so in this way the series inverter operates in a simple manner we are supposed to write case 1 and case 2 i hope it is clear this is very important circuit waveforms we'll see later on for this one so first i want to introduce the inverters in an easy manner so series inverter i hope already understood case 1 t1 is on and case 2 when capacitor discharges t2 is on when capacitor discharges t1 will be off because the load current when it is completely discharged the load current will be equal to zero so now I hope this point is clear. Series inverter waveforms will see later on. So, most important concept in today's class. Any one student, please confirm me. Animation is visible. Actually, your network is low. That's why I'm asking. I could not. Yes, turn. sir. Okay, very good, very good. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, our today's class main concept starts from this animation. Series inverter circuit is okay. Pulse width modulation is our topic. In detail, we'll discuss. It takes two classes. Now, what is this animation? Why I'm showing this animation here? You must remember power electronics. Now, what are the topics we are having? Converters, full converters, and next to choppers, and then inverters. So, if you see the converters, converters convert AC to DC. Okay. So, converters. How we are going to control by changing dash angle? Anyone tell me what is that angle? I am using the converter, single phase, full converter, off converter, semi converter. But how, how to control the speed of the motor by changing dash angle? Which angle? Firing angle. Firing angle is changed by changing the which terminal of the SCR? Gate terminal. So what is this first animation? In order to control the speed of the motor, in order to control the brightness of the bulb, if I am using the converter, I am going to change the gate terminal. By changing the gate terminal, we are changing the firing angle, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Anyone shouldn't tell me, if the firing angle is less, what is output voltage? Output voltage is uh, maximum or min minimum? If the firing angle is less, if the firing angle is less, output voltage is maximum. Already we have taken. Now, what is the second animation? This is important. Okay. In this animation is related to the chopper. Choppers convert fixed DC to variable DC. Variable DC is in front of you. This is the signal. Variable DC is nothing but what is the shape of the variable DC means square waveform, which can be changed. So if I'm using the chopper circuit, step up or step down chopper, I can control the brightness of the bulb by changing duty cycle in converters by changing the firing angle. But in choppers, we use duty cycle. What is the formula of duty cycle? Anyone tell me? Duty cycle is the ratio of T on by T. So what is T? The complete time period. T on and T off. You have seen. So if you are using a chopper, if you have seen a chopper practical circuit in the lab also it is there. When the lab is started, you are going to see that duty cycle knob will also be present. So you can see by changing the value of duty cycle, you can change the brightness of LED bulb. This is the LED bulb here. Okay. So how to change the duty cycle? We are going to change the time period, T on and T off condition. So these two points must be clear to all the students. Now we are discussing the inverters. Inverters also, the theory concept is, what is pulse width modulation? Modulation means modification. Modification means changing the characteristics. Changing the characteristic means changing the frequency, remember, all the students, or the voltage value. So changing the characteristics means changing the frequency, changing the voltage, or changing the current value. Okay. So our topic is pulse width modulation. So if I'm using the converter, okay, this general topic, uh, we change the firing angle to control the speed of the motor. And if I'm using the chopper, we change the duty cycle to control the speed of the motor. Now, what is this pulse width modulation? Basic, I am going to show you with this animation. Pulse width modulation involves 
change in the width of the pulses to control the speed of the motor or to change the brightness of the bulb. So, with the, with the change, pulse width modulation technique is a technique which says that by changing the width of the pulses, the output voltage, output power is controlled. That is, the motor, the load is also controlled. Power transfer to the load is controlled. So, what is the use of power electronic subject? to control the power transfer to the load. Power electronics deals with conversion and control towards you have to remember. So now what is this pulse width modulation? This name I am giving to this animation. Pulse width modulation is a technique where by changing the width of the pulses, the output power value is also controlled. If the output power value is controlled, the load Connected to it can also be controlled. If the load is motor, motor speed is controlled. If the load is resistor load, the motor bulb brightness is also controlled. So we just go back to the next topic now. So modulation already uh, to the email, I sent the complete material. But what we are discussing right now, modulation, definition, everything I'll take in detail, you will never find in any textbook and you listen and write the theory points okay so theory points are important so what is the basic definition of so our topic is now pulse width modulation so why this topic is there by changing the width of the pulses you can control the output voltage output power so pulse width modulation is a technique with that is a technique in which the width of the pulses are changed or controlled to control the output power. I hope it is clear. First word. Okay. Right. What is modulation? Modulation means modification of a signal. Modification means changing the characteristics. Changing the characteristics means changing the time period. When time period is changed, T is equal to 1 by F. So automatically frequency changes. Changing the time period, changing the frequency, current value as well as the voltage value. Now we take the next level of the explanation. So now the new animation here, you can see here, what is the new animation? It is in the screen. Yes, this is important. In electronic communication, so next paragraph you can write. <coughs> in electronic communication systems, So what is this signal? First one, modulator, uh, everything we'll discuss here. In electronic communication, if I want to send one signal, my voice signal or video signal, see voice signal is single dimensional. Image signal is two dimensional. <coughs> video signal is three dimensional. Now all of you are using the WhatsApp, okay? Now, what is the new method of communication? You are using Airtel idea vodafone okay so all these are depending upon the towers but whatsapp communication is completely depending upon the internet okay that means the whatsapp is nowhere related to the ordinary telephonic uh, communication so here what i am trying to say using the whatsapp you are able to send three dimensional signal two dimensional signal and even single dimensional signal nowadays so single dimensional signal is voice signal. Let us say I want to send my voice from one place to another place for large distance. So here we use the pulse width modulation. So if you see the carrier, the carrier signal, the carrier signal is the base signal which has to be sent for long distance. Okay. See pulse width modulation explanation I am giving in depth here. So first statement what we have written. Pulse width modulation is a technique in which the width of the pulses are controlled or changed to control the speed of the motor to control the output power. In electronic communication, pulse width modulation technique is used to send the signals for long distance with high energy. To send the signals for long distance with high energy. That is application. How it is done? So, First, the basic signal, the base signal, which is transmitted for long distance, it is electromagnetic signal or the sine wave we can say, or carrier signal or base signal. 
this signal has to be transmitted for long distance but if i am sending only this signal <coughs> with the help of transmitter so what's going to happen it cannot be reached for long distance so this signal has to be modified that is it has to be modulated so how we can do modulation so modulation is a process of combining two signals understand combining two signals or modulation is a process of sing superimposing superimposing other word is combining modulation is a process of superimposing of two signals okay that word is very important so in modulation process the signal which is which has to be transmitted for long distance is called the carrier signal or the base signal and this signal is superimposed with the modulator or modulating signal or reference signal the signal which is used to increase the strength of base signal or carrier signal it is called the reference signal so i repeat once again in electronic communication pulse width modulation <coughs> is used to send the signals for long distance the signal which has to be transmitted for long distance is called carrier signal or base signal in modulation process this carrier signal is combined with modulating signal or reference signal in order to improve the characteristics improve the strength so when it is combined it is also called as superimposed now we are writing the exact definition of the pulse width modulation okay modulation we are writing modulation is a process of combining two signals or superimposing two signals one is carrier signal another one is modulating signal or reference signal so when these two signals are superimposed reference signal will increase the strength of the carrier signal and now the carrier signal shape and behavior starts to change now you can see the last two the green color animation and the pink color one violet <coughs> where after superimposition of two signals the new signal which is ready to be transmitted for long distance you can say it can have with the increase in the value amplitude or with the frequency so generally we go with the frequency one simple question all your cell phones are operating with a high frequency or low frequency tell me all of you all your cell phones are able to operate with high frequency radio frequency so if i am sending this simple signal it cannot be transmitted through air for long distance in order to transmit this signal through the air for long distance we are supposed to go for modulation people can ask you sir i am having the amplifier we have studied the amplifiers class a class d power amplifiers also in electronics uh, but uh, can we can we send for long distance no amplification says that the signal strength will be increased but when you are sending the signal through the air for long distance it should be modulated so only modulated signals can be transmitted for long distance so why we are discussing this also explain modulation is the theory or topic pulse width modulation if i am if i want to run the motor with high speed high frequency should be transmitted then this frequency will be minimum for the low speed <coughs> right so i hope all of you uh, now it is uh, understood so by changing the pulse width we are able to control the speed of the motor so what is a modulation we have taken just now pulse width modulation also so now we enter into the exact uh, topic now step by step each step i am explaining so that you will get the complete marks here so what is the modulation pulse width modulation as per our subject we have given the basic definition in electronics also you have seen now we in power electronics we are discussing so our complete topic name is sinusoidal pulse width modulation what is the name sinusoidal or sine wave pulse width modulation what is this topic why it is there we'll also discuss here i want to run the motor i want to start the motor okay using the inverters so directly with the help of inverter we are go not going to run the motor we must use the pulse width modulation technique if pulse width modulation technique is not used 
motor cannot rotate with uh, variable speed so inverter converts fixed dc to variable ac what is that inverter definition it is not dc to ac we are discussing inverters means power inverter inverter is a power electronic circuit which convert fixed dc power to variable ac power variable ac how we are going to obtain using pulse width modulation understood all of you now so what we do all of you see at this talk modulating signal the signal which is used to improve the energy characteristics of the carrier signal or the base signal is called modulating signal generally modulating signal is selected as the sine wave okay this sine wave is superimposed or combined with triangular waveform or any other waveform here example they have taken triangular so what going to happen when they are added which signal we are going to get pulse with modulated signal how we will get we'll see here so this is the animation very important animation what we are studying when you combine one triangular waveform with sine wave which signal we are going to obtain square wave signal we whose pulses can be varied width can be varied so this is called sinusoidal pulse width modulation sir why i have to use this sinusoidal pulse width modulation means if you want to run the speed of the motor at variable speed or if you want to control the brightness of the bulb the width of the pulses can be changed okay so now we go to the last slide here so today's topic is basic introduction of pulse width modulation only okay remember next class we continue with that one derivative part so modulation is a process of combining two signals okay when two signals sine wave and triangular wave are combined then we obtain the pulse signal by changing the width of the pulses we can control the speed of the motor by changing the width of the pulses we can send the signal for long distance so this is the basic how we implement now you see all of you the slide okay any one student tell me what it is written here modulation index is it visible all of you i have changed the slide modulation index is visible any one student confirm please yes sir right right so now you remember if i am using the converters i change the firing angle alpha if i am using the choppers we change the duty cycle del in order to control the speed of the uh, motor but if i am using the inverter circuit i should not use alpha or i should not use duty cycle we should use the new one which you can represent by gamma also which is called modulation index using the inverters we can control the output power by changing modulation index what is the definition of modulation induction modulation index is the ratio of reference voltage to the carrier voltage okay reference voltage to the carrier voltage so now in the examination direct theory question will be asked explain pulse width modulation and sinusoidal pulse width modulation or anything in sinusoidal pulse width modulation modulation the reference signal what is the definition of reference signal you can see here the reference signal is the the signal which is used to improve the energy improve the behavior or improve the characteristics of the base signal or carrier signal that signal is called the reference signal or modulating signal the signal whose characteristics or whose energy has to be improved is called the base signal or carrier signal now what is this one uh, pulse width modulation says that if the base signal is in the form of triangular waveform okay if it is in the form of triangular waveform and it is not used practically so this triangular waveform has to be superimposed with sine wave you can see here sine wave and triangular waveform are superimposed you must draw this diagram when they are superimposed or combined together what's going to happen pulse signal is created you can see so is it is easy to change the width of the pulses and we can convert dc to ac variable ac we can control the speed of the motor so now how, how to draw how pulse signal is generated you can see the point of interaction interaction of both the signals you can see sine wave is interacting at this point and at this point the point of interaction of both the signals are converted into the form of pulse signal you can see here also the point of interaction so positive off cycle three pulses and negative off cycle also three pulses it is the ac signal and this is one way of representation another way also you can see 
the point of interaction of two signals anything you can draw in the examination so what is the sinusoidal pulse width modulation in sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique the reference signal is the sine wave which is used to improve the characteristics of the triangular wave and sine wave is superimposed with the triangular wave you can say sir i will not use the triangular wave i will use the rectangle as yes, any signal here example they have taken if the signal triangular wave is not able to run the motor okay with the help of inverter what we have to do we have to use the pulse width modulation so once again i am explaining in a base point no inverter directly generate the sine wave okay that is okay i want to <coughs> if you want to convert dc current to ac current yes you can convert but what is our topic i want to control the speed of the motor with the help of inverter so what type of inverter we require the inverter which uses the dash technique pulse width modulation technique so if you go to any electronic shop or electronic student will say uh, i am using the transistor i am generating dc to ac my bulb is on that inverter we are not discussing in power electronics in power electronics we discuss the type of inverter which can control the brightness of the bulb <coughs> which can control the speed of the motor i hope you all of you are understanding electronic engineers can develop the basic low power inverters with the help of transistor which can be on and off just like a bulb but electrical engineers with the help of power electronic circuits they can they design the power inverter which can control the brightness of the bulb which can even control the speed of the induction motor so what is pulse width modulation pulse width modulation is a technique in which by changing the width of the pulses the output power is controlled the load position is also controlled pulse width modulation says that in in pulse width modulation two signals are superimposed the signal whose strength is very much weak we whose characteristics are very much low that signal is called carrier signal or base signal the signal which is used to improve the characteristics of the base signal is called the modulating signal or reference signal when these two signals are superimposed or combined practically using the adder circuit electronic adder circuit a new pulse signal is generated with the point of interaction of both the signal now when the pulse signal is generated by changing the t on and the t off the width of the pulses can be easily controlled okay so how much control is done it is explained by the modulation index so in inverters we can uh, control the output power by changing the modulation index which is ratio of vr by vc what is vr what is the voltage value if i am using 5 volts sine wave it will be 5 volts okay triangle carrier wave signal also 10 volts so modulation index plays a crucial role so remember sinusoidal pulse width modulation material also you have said you study that one next class also we will take the problematic part on this one it is a theory question let us move to the last slide for today's topic right all of you in the syllabus you are having sinusoidal pulse width modulation single pulse width modulation this topic you just remember the graph no same explanation single pulse means what here see here the reference signal is rectangle and the carrier signal is triangle only we generate single pulse this type of technique cannot provide the high efficiency so everywhere people are going for the sinusoidal pulse width but diagram you are supposed to remember two signals are superimposed we generate the we generate the pulse signal okay now one more thing is multiple pulse width the current going down who is uh, please mute yourself anyone is sweta okay right now multiple pulse width in one cycle in one off cycle we are generating the number of triangular waves so what is this explanation which is the best suited means sinusoidal pulse width but only the graph you remember multiple pulse width is a triangular wave form superimposed with the rectangle the rectangular wave form which is called reference when both are superimposed the point of interaction of both the signals will generate the pulses okay
so today's topic we are concentrating on the only what is the basic introduction of the pulses modulation let me take the attendance here any question is there anyone ask me